In this video, we will prove that the language L, which is the set of strings a to the 2n, b to the n plus 1, with n greater than or equal to 0, is not regular. And we're going to use pumping for regular languages to prove this. So let's remember what the pumping lemma for regular languages says. It says if a language is regular, then it has some number p, which is the pumping length, so that for every string that's in the language with length at least p, there exists some decomposition of this string into the parts x, y, and z, such that the following conditions hold. So what are the following conditions? So what we're saying is, we're saying if L is regular, there exists P, pumping length, and for every s in the language with the length of s at least p, following three, oops, I jumped apart, jumped an important part, there exists A decomposition of S into parts X, Y, and Z such that the following conditions hold, or you could say satisfying the following conditions. What are they? Number one, uh, for all I greater than or equal to zero, S prime So this pump string is still in the language, but it also needs to be the case that the length of y is strictly greater than zero, so y can't be empty. And three, the length of xy is less than or equal to p. So x and y can't exceed p. Okay, so if the language is regular, then this uh, holds for every string that's greater than or equal to uh, the that has length greater than or equal to p, the pumping length for that language. So it says there is some decomposition so that for all i, the pump string is in the language. So we need to consider, if we want to prove that the language is not regular, we need to find some string with length greater than p, or at least as big as p, and then consider every decomposition and show that we can find some i so that the pump string is out of the language. Okay, so that's our that's our tactic. Okay, so let's choose string S is going to be A to the 2P, B to the P plus 1. So first, let's make sure that S is in L. Okay, remember the language L had A to the 2N, B to the N plus 1, with N at least 0. So this is going to be in this language. So here P, S is an L, uh, because, um, how do we want to say this? Because the form is correct. Okay, P could be N, and then there are two N A's and N plus one B's, and they're in order. They're in the correct order. Okay, what else do we need? We need the length of s is equal to 3p plus 1, which is greater than p, so we have length at least p. Okay, so we've satisfied the first two initial cases. We had to pick a string in the language, and it had to have length at least p. Okay, so now we can go on to consider the decompositions. So the second and third condition tell us that y has to have at least one symbol in it, and x and y uh, the chunk that's covered by x and y can't be too large, and it has to be close to the beginning, right? Because x is the first chunk of s. So x is going to be any symbols that are at the very beginning, y is the middle symbols, could, could include the beginning symbols as well, we'll see in a moment, and then z is the end. So x and y can't be larger than p, and they need to start from the left-hand side of the string. So, so let's let um, the length of y be k 
And since y can't be 0, k has to be at least 1. And let's call the length of x j. And notice x could be empty. There's no restriction that x can't be epsilon. So j is at least 0. And that's, that's the only thing we have on j. Since these need to show up at the beginning, um, x and y have to appear in the first p a's. So what I mean is, uh, yeah, they have to show up at the beginning. So all we really need to show here is the decomposition um, for all of these values of j and k. So that would look like if the x chunk is a to the j, the y chunk is a to the k, and then the remaining, so this is x, this is y, and then the remaining a's are going to be part of z, the z chunk, and this is all of the a's that are left, so it's 2p minus k minus j. All of those a's are going to end up in the z chunk. And then we have b to the p plus 1, and that's also in the z chunk. Okay, so this is the z chunk. And so we had noticed here um, that because the length of x and y has to be less than p, the this chunk here, the xy chunk, has to be somewhere in the first p a's. Okay, so it says that the part that we're going to be pumping is located only in the a's. Okay, we can't actually start pumping into the b's. All right, so let's choose. We have, we're modeling now every decomposition that satisfies the conditions. Okay, I say every decomposition even though I've only written one because the values of k and j could be any legal values, so any legal decomposition. So let's look at what happens when um, i equals 0. Remember, we only have to find some i that pumps the string out of the language. So let's let i equal 0, and let's consider what s prime is. So s prime would be x, y to the 0, z. We have 0, uh, repetitions or occurrences of the y chunk. So what that leaves us with is a to the j, the y chunk is gone, a to the 2p minus k minus j, b to the p plus 1, which notice is just the same thing as a to the 2p minus k minus the chunk that we took off for the y chunk, and then b to the p plus 1. So that's what we're left with. Okay, so intuitively we can see that this is not going to be in the language because the length of y is at least 1, but let's make a stronger argument than an intuitive argument. So let me get some more room and let me copy this down. So s prime was a to the 2p minus k b to the p plus 1, right? Let me double check. Yep. That was s prime. This was for i equals 0. Okay, so let's notice that for a string to be in the language L, we already know the a's and b's have to be in order, but we haven't violated that. Our a's are still at the front, our b's are still at the end, so we don't really need to worry about that part. What we do need to worry about is how many a's and b's we have. Okay, so the number of a's in the language, or in a string that is in the language, is going to be 2 times the number of b's minus 2. Okay, where did I get this from? I got this from the number of a's was 2n, which is equal to 2 times n plus 1, the number of b's, minus 2. Okay, so those are equal. All right, so that's the form for the number of a's. Okay, how many a's are in s prime? So the number of a's in s prime, let me put it up here, number of a's in s prime is 2p minus k. All right, that's the length of that chunk, so it, that has that many a's. And so how many b's do we have? How many b's? Yes. What I'm trying to say is 
How does the number A of A's relate to the number of B's that we should have? We should have 2 times the number of B's, which is P plus 1. So this part was the number of B's, minus 2. This is from this formula here. Number of A's should be equal to 2 times the number of B's, minus 2. Okay, and then let's just simplify this a little bit. So this should be 2P plus 2 minus 2, which is just this. Okay, so we should case that the number of A's in S prime is equal to 2P in this case. Did I do that correctly? Yes, I did that correctly. Okay. But since k was specifically at least 1, 2p minus k can't be equal to 2p, right? So then s prime is not in the language. Okay, so we have a contradiction. s prime can't be in the language. But if the language is regular, all of this should hold, meaning that for for some decomposition, there is, it's the case that for all i, the pump string is in the language. So what we did was we considered every decomposition and showed that for every single one of them that has these valid conditions, we can find some i, specifically i equals zero, so that the pump string is out of the language. So we violated this condition. Okay, therefore, our assumption that the language is regular is incorrect. So we have contradiction, then L cannot be regular, okay, because we can find some I that pumps the string out of the language for any possible decomposition we could have.